What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this abstract slice text effect in Cinema 4D. Uh, a big thing for this is you need to have Cinema 4D R18 or above to have the fracture effect um, that we use in this. Um, that's very important. Also, I want to give a big shout out to the YouTuber iDesign. Um, he's the one that inspired this tutorial. I, wasn't, I didn't even know about this fracture effect and upgraded my Cinema 4D to use it. And I followed his tutorial for the beginning, but his tutorial doesn't really work on text. So I had to do my own thing and created what um, we're doing here today. So go check out his channel and his tutorial if you want to create something like that, which is really sweet. But we're going to be creating this. Now this is the Photoshop version. And this is what we're going to be creating here today in Cinema 4D. I will put the Photoshop file in the description for so you guys can create this after we're done with the Cinema 4D part. Um, and a few things before we get started, I'm using my Lightroom and uh, materials which are in my store or if you're a Patreon uh, subscriber, you can download it on my Patreon page. Uh, if you don't have either of those things and don't want to spend money, I'll show you how to make an alternate material and I also will include a free Lightroom down in the description in case you need one. But the materials don't really matter, the Lightroom doesn't really matter, you guys can use your own things. Use the free ones in the description and what I'll show you, or you can buy mine if you're interested. Anyways, let's just jump into the tutorial. So the first thing we're going to need is some text. So go to MoGraph, Mo Text, and you'll be on Object. You want to set the depth to 1. You want to make the Align Middle. Uh, height, I'm going to do 175 because that will fit my Lightroom better. And depending on the Lightroom you use, um, you can edit the text so it just fits under the lights and gets good lighting. Um, of course you can adjust your Lightroom as well to fit the text. Um, let's change the text to shred or whatever text you want yours to say. Um, the font I'm going to be using is called uh, Coder? Coder? Coacher? I'm not exactly sure. It's C-O-U-T-U-R-E. So right here. It's a nice simple serif font, um, nice and blocky. I'd recommend, or a sans serif font, I recommend not using a serif font because that will get a little cra cr um, well, it will get a little chaotic once you do the fracture. And even like the S, the rounded part here, and the rounded part of the R can get a little funky with the fracture. So be careful with the font you choose. When you do the fracture, one thing that's nice about this is you can change the font even after it's fractured. So if you're not sold on this font and want to change it to another font, you can wait until the fracture and you can um, not even change your font yet if you want to wait. Anyway, let's go over to caps and set the fillet cap to one radius. Also, one thing I did was go to object and change the horizontal spacing to five just to give a little separation. Uh, between each letter because they will be kind of disformed and I don't want them to overlap too much I want it to still be legible and so people can read it. That's the whole point um, Anyways, once you have that set up we can go ahead to the fracture So go to MoGraph and Voronoi fracture or Voronoi fracture I've Seen it's like a Russian word. I don't really know how it's pronounced, but I think it's Voronoi Anyways, I'm just gonna call it fracture. So let's add that and drag our mo text into it and you'll see it will fracture now on the fracture we want to change a few things so I'm just gonna click the object tab and offset fragments I'm gonna to go to 0.1 you can go up all the way to about 1 um, I went with 0.1 just to have a little separation and that ended up working for me um, but we can play around with this. Uh, I'm just going to stick at point 0.1 for now and we can change that later. You can set it to whatever you want and then check hole only. Now you want to go to the sources tab, click that and you'll see it's a point generation distribution for how it is fractured. And we just want to go ahead and select that and delete it. And you'll notice our text is no longer fractured and we want to go to MoGraph matrix. Go back to the fracture. In sources, drag the matrix down into there, and you'll notice it starts shredding on the matrix points. Um, well, we want to change that around a little bit, so let's go back to the matrix. Uh, mode we want to set to linear, 
and we want to I'm gonna move this over to the side so we can see it a little better um, we want to do this at endpoint so mode endpoint if you come here you have a little yellow dot on the end we just want to increase that a little bit and then we can grab the one at the beginning and bring that one down as well so it covers our whole text something like that and then we want to just increase the points so I did about 28 I believe the first time and you can see we have these horizontal fractures going across our text which is what we want now we're gonna rotate this a little bit so we might want to increase the height of it even more so you can use this endpoint or come down here to the Y and I'm just gonna set that to 350 and bring it down sorta of like that now we're gonna do one thing to the text real fast so select the text and go to MoGraph effector random if you come to parameter um, come to position we can change this to like small single digits so actually X I'm gonna do zero and Z I'm gonna do zero and Y like five just to give a little offset and then on rotation we're gonna check that do a little negative it's negative 10 works let's go negative on the Y that's pretty good and then positive on the Z there we go so that just makes our text look a little more interesting in my mind you don't have to do that but it is an option now if you go to the fracture and again go to MoGraph effector random we have a couple other things we can do um, we're actually gonna check all three of these things and so position scale and rotation are checked you'll notice positions a little crazy so this we want to bump down let's just set these all to five for now and see how it's looking that's pretty good I'm gonna decrease the X a couple decrease the Y and we'll decrease the Z there we go so it's three three two for me and then on scale I'm gonna do like negative oh one maybe negative oh two maybe negative oh one again actually we'll go a little further Let's do negative 03 on these first and last ones and that just changes the scale of all these independent parts just slightly and then on rotation we want to do again a little bit negative a little bit negative and a little bit negative so if you render this real quick you'll see something like this our text is being split apart and it's looking pretty cool now we want to select the fracture again and go to MoGraph effector and this time we want to do push apart and you'll notice everything kind of disappears into particles which is what we want and you'll notice the radius down here is at a hundred we want to change that to like nine or ten or something smaller so let's try ten it's a little too much we'll go to about seven I think that looks pretty good and then if we render this out now let's go to the displacers here and get a displacer and drag that to the mo text go to shading the drop down arrow and do noise click the noise and come in here and you'll want to pick a different option of noise so if you click the drop down where it says noise let's go ahead and do you could do displaced uh, uh, Voronoi I already forget how I, I said it um, or any of these ones but I think we're gonna do sparse convol sparse convolution select that all right and then let's go to global scale bump this to 300 there we go now it's getting it's slowly getting better let's bump the contrast up a little bit cool and that's about all we need to do here for the displacement now we just have to go in and tweak things so if we go to the fracture object we can again change the offset of the fragments 
if you want to increase it. I'm going to stay at 0.1. We can also bump up the thickness to 0.1. Um, that will screw up some things towards the end, so I'd be cautious with that, but I'm going to keep it at zero. It's another thing you can play with. And we can also check hollow object or optimize and close holes. And all these things will just create different looks. And depending on the text or whatever you're doing, it might be something you might want to try. Anyways, let's go to the most important part, and that's back to the matrix. And we want to rotate this. So let's go to the rotation tool, and let's start playing with the where this is lined up. So we want it on slightly, like a slight angle like this. So all the shreds are diagonal. And if I bring it towards the camera, like the top part towards the camera, you'll notice it starts changing and um, the top of the matrix will create a less of a shredding effect and or like less of perfect lines the more it's pointed towards the text like if it's this way you'll notice there's no lines to even be seen but if it's up vertical you can see the lines so you want to find the happy medium that has both um, so let's keep it like that All right, so I like how this looks right now. Let me show you a quick render. If, By the way, if you don't want these boxes to show up, come to the matrix and just double click on the two red um, stop sign things. I believe the top one, if you leave that check, it'll be visible here, but when you render it out, it won't be. So let's do that and keep the bottom one red. Render it out and let's see what this looks like. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with how this is looking. This is like right on with the effect I want. So what I'm gonna do is grab everything here. So the push apart down to the fracture, right click, and we're gonna group all of this. Now, what I did was open that up and added my materials to the Mo text. So let me go ahead and drop that in here. And let me just show you what that material looks like all right so that's pretty good um, you'll notice our defector isn't really doing a lot on the text though so let's go back into our text go to the caps tab go to type and instead of n-gons let's do triangles or you could do quadrangles and check regular grid and you can keep it at 10 um, width that's fine also, if you want to come down here and check create single object, you'll get a more closely tied um, effect so it's not all crazy and hectic. And you can do that and then go to maybe the push apart, increase that to about 9. And you can go to the random effector parameter and maybe increase the position a little more on some of these. Um, and that might work a little better for this. But either way, uh, if you don't want to create the single object, that's fine as well. Um, let's just go ahead and render it out now and see how it's looking. So you'll notice the edges aren't as chaotic now. They're more together. Everything is more whole in my mind. I hate when the edges separate and I think that looks a little weird. So you'll notice my material that I'm using has a nice glow on the edge of the text. And that's because if I open it up, it has a luminance that is a gradient. And I don't know if the reflectance even does anything, but um, the luminance that is a gradient is the important part of that. Um, so if I check that, you'll notice it's just a normal material and ugly yellow. But the luminance is what creates the effect. So if I go in here, it's just a color with a white, uh, black to white overlay. So if you want to recreate this, material in some way you need a color uh, maybe a texture of some sorts and a luminance of a gradient of a color you want by the way whatever the color is will affect the color in the middle so I have a yellow along with the luminance of blue to create the color that is seen here it's kind of like a purplish with a blue 
um, outer glow. And then that's the same with all these materials. They're all the same. So if you want to create it, that's basically how you do it. Now, what I did for creating the multicolored part of this, um, I first of all, I'm hopping out of my camera and coming to a side view like so. And we're going to duplicate the whole null. And we're going to copy it and paste it one, two, three times. So we have four. Let's grab the second one. Let's grab the move tool. Bring it back slightly. Like that. Grab the third one. Do the same. And grab the fourth one and do the same. Get them about even, but they don't have to be perfectly even. Let's go back to the camera. And then let's go into the second null and let's change its color. So I'm going to put a red there. And one thing that's weird about Cinema 4D R20, if you just drag this material on top of here, it won't change. So you have to actually drag it behind and then delete the other material. You don't have to delete it, but you have to drag it behind so it's visible. It's one of those weird things. Um, anyway, let's go to the matrix and grab the rotation tool and let's change it to mix it up so not all of these are the same. So I'm just going to rotate it down left a little bit and we're going to do the same thing for these next three. Um, so I like to stagger my colors a little bit so I want blue, red, um, and then like a bluish purple and then an orangey red. So like they're it, similar color groups if you know what I'm saying. So we'll do a blue here after the red and then let's rotate the matrix. We'll do this one um, Come on, we'll do this one down and to the right, I guess. And then the last one we'll do an orange to fit the red. And we'll rotate this one, we'll just rotate this one up like so. Now these may be a little too far apart. I might have to bring them closer together, but let's just render it out and see what it's looking like. And I think it's looking really good, uh, but I do think we should bring them slightly closer. So let's hop out of the camera, the move, grab the move tool, and just move these a little closer. I don't want the first one though. Let's do the second one, bring it a little closer. Third one, bring it a little closer. And fourth one, bring it a little closer. Now let's hop back into the camera and let's select all of these and group them again. And this time, we're gonna go to the subdivision surface, get that and add all of these to it. So this will just round out all the edges and create like a really good look. I think this looks way better than not having the subdivision surface. So if we render it out, it's a lot more smooth. The cuts in the effect look really nice. The edges get rounded. And I just think it's a really beautiful looking effect as you can see here. And with all the colors, I think that's really neat. Uh, we could add some other colorful particles around it or something to enhance it a little bit. But that is basically the completed effect. And of course, guys, you guys can play around with this so many different ways. Uh, you could just use one text instead of duplicating it three times to get the effect. Um, you could make it instead of one depth, you can uh, make it 10, 20, 70, whatever you want. But that is basically the tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tutorials. Make sure to download everything in the description that you may need for this. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Check out my Instagram, which is That's Quezzy. And hopefully I will see you in the next one, guys. Peace.